It's Mock Draft season here at the Broncos Breakdown. I'm your host as always, Sam Brown. You can find me on Twitter at SamBrownCS. Love to talk Broncos with you guys. But last night I hopped on Pro Football Network's Draft Simulator and went through the first three rounds for the Denver Broncos in the 2021 NFL Draft. I'll show you some of the picks, give you some feedback, and then I want to hear from you and see what you have to say. So let's obviously look at the first three picks that the Broncos have. Number nine overall, which we talked about over and over. Number 40 overall in the second round. And number 71 overall in the third round. Hopefully can add some value on that defensive side of the ball at all three levels, potentially, honestly. Whether it's at the cornerback position and the linebacker core, potentially a nose tackle or an edge. I think the Broncos have several positions that they can address there in the draft. And... Hopefully you'll like the picks that I put out and uh, we'll jump right in. But first, I want to hear from you guys. Who should the Broncos draft in the first round? We've talked about the big three guys, Micah Parsons, Patrick Sertan, and Caleb Farley. But maybe you have a different name in mind. Let me know in the comments section. Pinned comment, first comment you see right underneath this video. I want to hear from you guys. And we're going to be doing plenty of draft coverage up until draft night. We're going to be doing more mock drafts like this. This is just a sneak peek. I'm just giving you a little taste of some of the draft coverage we'll be doing soon. A full, a full seven-round mock draft for sure coming soon. So be sure to subscribe if you want more draft coverage. You see that link below me. It's YouTube.com slash Broncos TV. I want to try to get to 2,000 subs as soon as possible. And I need you to make it happen. Let's jump right into the number nine pick overall. There were several players available at number nine. Obviously, the big three that we've talked about in Parsons, Sertan, and Farley. Rashawn Slater, an offensive lineman that I think could fit both at guard and at tackle at the, at the professional level. And then Kyle Pitts. I don't, I don't think it's likely that the, uh, that the Broncos would draft Kyle Pitts at number nine, but he certainly would be very exciting to add next to Noah Fant. I think you have one of the best young tight end duos in football if you pull that off. With that being said... The 49ers swooped in and offered a trade for the number nine overall pick. So here's what it looked like. They would get number nine. The Broncos would get number 12 and the number 43 overall pick in the second round, giving them 40 and 43 in the second round. I want to hear from you guys because this, this is an enticing offer, and I want to see what you guys think. Would you make this trade? You can type Y for yes, or you can type N for no. I haven't really asked you guys if the Broncos should trade down with their pick, so I kind of want to hear what you guys think here. You can type Y for yes, or you can type N for no. I might catch some flack for this one, but I, I accepted this trade. You know, I thought it was a nice gamble because those three players, Parsons, Sertan, and Farley, are still on the board. I thought, hey, getting back a few picks, getting an extra second-round pick in return, Thought was a fair deal. Took a gamble. Hopefully one of the guys would be at the on the board at number 12. And I was right. Patrick Sertan falls to number 12, and I took him with our first round pick. Somehow was still on the board at number 12. I think he's the most pro-ready cornerback prospect in this draft. Not the fastest cornerback in the world, like we've said, but he's great with his hands. Very aggressive cornerback. Has a really good instinct and timing for when to stick his hands and poke a ball out. He'll probably start week one Den in Denver, opposite of Bryce Callahan. And I think that's a very solid uh, cornerback duo that you can build around. He's had some crazy games in his time at Alabama in a very accomplished career. 24 pass breakups and four interceptions in 40 games at Alabama. Honestly, this season his stats don't pop off the number or don't pop off the page for you. Only 37 tackles, nine PBUs, one INT. But that's kind of because he was kind of building like an island on one side of that Alabama secondary. Teams wouldn't really throw at him, pick on a younger corner like Josh Job. But this is a very bright talent. I think, like I said, the most pro-ready prospect in this draft at the cornerback position. Farley is, is an interesting fit in Denver's defense as well, but I went ahead and went with Sertan at number 12 overall. Let's move on to the second round here, the number 40 overall pick, which is the Broncos pick, and I drafted Jason Owe, the edge from Penn State. He's an incredibly raw, very athletic edge. He's got lots of upside, still can build out his frame at 6'5 and 245 pounds. He, he had a limited college experience, I, I will say. Only 20 games. He's going to need some time to develop, but that's the beauty of drafting him here in the second round. I think a lot of people, some people have a first-round grade on Owe, but having him slide at 40, he doesn't really have to rush into heavy reps at Denver. He can learn behind Von Miller and Bradley Chubb. Even Malik Reed, who grew as a pass rusher in his second season, I think Jason Owe fits in there as a developmental type of guy that eventually I think could turn into a 10-sack-a-season guy if Von Miller winds up leading leaving Denver down the road. You come up with a trio potentially of Chubb, Reed, and Owe. I think that's a very young and bright future to build around at the edge spot. 
All right, let's go to the 49ers pick now at number 43 overall. I went with Hamza Nasir Dean, the safety out of Florida State. He's an incredibly versatile athlete. Again, athletic guys. These are kind of guys that I'm going after in the draft. Can play strong safety, free, free safety, or even in the nickel. Offers some versatility there and some options for what Denver could, where Denver could slot him depending on certain packages. Obviously only played two games this season. He tough, uh, suffered a torn ACL in 2019 and was still rehabbing for that for the majority of the season. But when you look at his career stats, I mean, 233 tackles, nine PBUs, four interceptions. This is a, a, a ball hawk, your typical safety ball hawk. He's great against the run, flies to the ball, could use some development and coverage as a single high safety, but I think he fits in well. And I think we won this trade with the 49ers. When you look at the payout that we got with Sertan and Hamza Nasir Dean at 12 and 43. You're really starting to build that Denver secondary on the off chance that Kareem Jackson leaves in free agency, that the Broncos will likely cut A.J. Bouye. All of a sudden, you've got a budding young core there. You add Michael Ojemudia, who hopefully can make a jump in his second season, and you're starting to, to rebuild that, uh, that, that legion of boom, if you will, the no-fly zone in Denver, uh, part two, with Nasir Dean, Bryce Callahan, Patrick Sertan. I think that's a good start for Denver. So I went, off, or I went defense with my first two picks, or my first three picks, in the first and second rounds. So what do you think I should do at pick number 71? Should I get an offensive player to bolster maybe the position, the skill position groups, or the offensive line? Or are we saying, hey, let's go all in on the defense, continue to bolster that team up? Let me know. You can type O for offense in the comments, or sorry, you can type 1 for offense, or you can type uh, 2 for defense. 1 for offense, 2 for defense. I went with offense in round three, and it was kind of a best player available pick. I went with Javante Williams, the running back out of North Carolina. Didn't really love the prospects that were available in the third round. Pete Werner among some of the names there, but I just felt like Javante Williams' upside was too good to pass up. He's a physical back at 5'10", 220 pounds, but he's got good speed. He accelerates really well, and he has really good agility. He has improved also as a receiver over his time at UNC and obviously was the lead back in that UNC 1-2 punch of him and Michael Carter. But over 1,100 total rushing yards, 300 more in the receiving game, 22 total touchdowns. This is a guy that found the end zone in that Tar Heel offense and I think could grow, could challenge for touches early with Royce Freeman, but could also grow into a bigger role in his second and third season depending on you know, whether a Melvin Gordon leaves or a Philip Lindsay leaves in free agency, I think Javante Williams is a great back to fit into that Denver offense. So you saw all my picks, grade my mock draft. You can do A, B, C, D, or F. Let's throw it back to school. I, I want to hear from you. Be honest with me. If you didn't love it, go ahead and let me know and let me know who you would pick if you loved it. Let me know. I want all the credit I can get. I wouldn't mind a couple A's and B's in the comments, but I want you to be honest with me. I think we got some pretty good value out of this uh, this mock draft. Sertan, obviously, at number 12 overall, a huge win, I think. I'm, I'll, I'd be surprised if he falls to 12 or even past 12 in the actual uh, NFL draft. Jason Owe, a developmental guy that I think could really grow into his role and fills in, uh, fill in as a, a viable replacement as a pass rusher if Von Miller chooses to leave eventually. Hamza Nasirul Dean, a safety out of Florida State, who I think would complement Justin Simmons well. And then Javante Williams, a running back that I think would start as a backup, can challenge for touches early, but could grow into that role more, maybe even turn into a, a feature back in this league. I think he's very, very well-rounded. I actually love that pick in the third round. But let's hear your grades for my mock draft, A, B, C, D, or F. And as always, if you disagree with me, let me know on Twitter. My DMs are open for a reason. I want to hear from you guys. Sam Brown CS, that's the place to find me. I'm trying to grow my Twitter game a little bit, get to know you guys a little bit better. So if you want to talk Broncos, mock draft, offseason, or if you just want to talk football in general, you can find me on Twitter at Sam Brown CS.